Hey, y'all, this is Mary Payne. And this is Kimberly. And this is Katie. And we want to tell you about a very special moment. It's coming up soon. A date with Dateline, that's us, and Pink Shade, that's her, are teaming up for a shady datey, that rhymes, very clever, holiday special on December 13th. The three of us are going to recap a Hallmark Channel newish Christmas movie. It's called Mystery on Mistletoe Lane on Moment. It's a moment. <laughs> it's a moment, guys. We're going to recap the episode and we're going to have a fun trivia game for prizes. So I'm going to submit some trivia questions. These gals are going to submit some trivia questions. We're going to do a secret Santa exchange and then we're going to give away the gifts. It's just prizes and giveaways and trivia. And if you aren't sure where to watch the actual movie, the link is attached in the show notes, as they say in the biz. Yeah. And if prizes and giveaways were not enough for all of you, there are also special guests <gasps> that might show up, maybe. So how do you watch this live event, Kimber? Take us through it. Tickets go on sale November 27th at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I think 9, 10, 11, 12. That math That's that match. That match My goodness. is mathing. The link to purchase will be included in the show notes. You just click the link, get your tickets. Tickets are $15 now or $17 the day of the show. $17 is more than $15, so it's better to buy them early. That's right. But if you're a member of Patreon or Supercast for either podcast or both or, you know, whatever, you'll uh, get a discount code. So just watch your email inbox for that. And remember, the actual event, the moment itself is December 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. And it's going to be crazy, festive fun. Kimberly, are you wearing a costume? Mary Payne, are you wearing a costume? Yes. Yes, I'm right now. I'm not wearing a costume for the moment. I'm I'm yes. looking up costumes right now. <laughs> Great. I um yeah, I'm gonna get festive. I've got a special wine glass that I'm gonna break out. I've got my gingerbread earrings, and I've got a special shirt I'm gonna wear. Yeah, Good. yeah. Donner yeah. dancer Blitzen nailed it. All right, let's go. That's why we pay you the big bucks. So click the link below or above or wherever you're looking, just click that link and join us on December 13th for a shady, datey Hollywood or holiday spectacular. Hollywood holiday spectacular. Hollywood, That's Hollywood, right. Holiday That's right. There's going to be Hollywood actors appearing. Yes. Stars. Right. All the stars. <laughs> All the stars. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you. See you there. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Pink Shade. This is part two of our Love After Lockup finale because they gave us two episodes this week. They didn't make it one big one. So we're giving you two episodes of this. This is season five, episode 12, Onion of Lies. Keisha, it's been so long since I've seen you. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. I mean, we both look exactly the same as we looked last time, you know. Uh, Wild. I'm, I'm, not much has changed. Let me knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I will tell you that one thing I meant to mention to you in the um, other episode. So, you guys, if you're looking for ep- uh, part one, just it's going to be the one right before this. It's part one of the Love After Lockup finale. I meant to tell you that when I did my interview with Chantel, and I don't know mm-hmm. if you had a chance to listen, Mm-mm. I ref- I ref- reference you and what you thought. And she said, well, your co-host is, she said, I think your co-host is right. She's definitely right. <gasps> I think it was, it was about, it was about either him being the virgin or he's not a virgin oh. uh, or something else. And I said, my co-host thinks that, uh, and she goes, well, your co-host is right. That's right. Yeah. Maybe they'll put that on my headstone one day. Chantel, Chantel said, said she was right. Chantel said I was right. That's oh right. wait, I have a, I have something to say. Ooh, tell me if you're if you're enjoying the show, tell a friend and also leave us a five star review on iTunes. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> where where did that come from? Did James tell you you need to remember to be saying that on your podcast? I I, I do it on my show all the time, and then I forget to do it on here. And I I'm not above begs. Yeah. yeah. Leave us a five star. And if you ain't got nothing good to say, yo mama. Oh. <laughs> you guys, 
if you aren't listening to the Libra Lounge at Keisha, that's just a taste. And if you oh, that was that was that like was, a level zero. That was nothing. Oh, that was mm-mm. nothing. And mm-mm. you guys, if you listen to part one of this, you would have heard Keisha say something really terrible. What I say? When you ask why do they mic Chelsea? Look. I know damn well I am not the only person out there wondering the same thing. And it's not to be mean. I'm just like, why? It'd be um, like uh, putting a blindfold over a blind person's eyes, right? I understand what you're saying. But like on 90 Day, they have David and Sheila and he's deaf and he is always mic'd. And And he doesn't. He doesn't talk as much as Chelsea does. Like Chelsea can form words that you can kind of David, you can't understand at all. And um he, And they still have him mic'd. Uh-huh. Cause you can and you can hear what he's sometimes he makes noises and you can hear him. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Chelsea. You I you know, I may spend five minutes in hell for saying that. That's but right. I, yeah. you know, I gotta I'm gonna stay down there for a lot of other reasons as well. So <laughs> that'll be your, that'll be just your first five minutes. <laughs> just add that to the list. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, speaking of those two, let's get started on season five, episode twelve, Onion of Lies, which mm-hmm. I really was after when watching it the second time, I was like, I don't even know who said that. That's gross, but it was if someone Brittany, did. It was a Britney about Andy. Yeah. It should have been Brittany about Brittany. I was about to say, it could really apply to a lot of people here. Right? Yeah. So Chelsea and Mikey, um, let's see. Uh, Mikey's annoyed because then we start off when they're sitting in the car at the at the courthouse, which by that courthouse was beautiful. Yes, it was nice. It was nice mm-hmm. uh, because she has run in because she's panicked that she's going to get in trouble because her minor child, 15, right. Corey, had gotten in trouble for stealing snacks out of a snack machine or something. And... She was worried she would get put in jail because yes. she didn't bring him to this probation um, meeting. So, and a parent can get arrested for that. I was just jealous at the fact that Corey's arm and hand were small enough to reach inside of a vending machine. That my ham hock hands wouldn't get past anything. I'm like, God, you got to have a skinny arm for that. I mean, I bet I could do it. I've got little hands. I bet. I bet I you could do. do. I'm, I'm not going to. You try see it, mine? They're huge. Could. Yeah, I got little hands, and then you won't want to break any of those nails. You've always got nice nails. Well, they're a little bit long because they need to be redone. But no, these this ain't going to make it up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So he's like annoyed. He's like, everything's going wrong, you know. Right. Me in here at this courthouse, obviously with all these cops around, is really triggering for me. Triggering. Yeah. His reasons. Like, I'm in this car. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not anywhere I'm not supposed to be. I'm not breaking right. any laws. But he's just like nervous. So she PTSD. Runs back. She, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. So she gets in the car. And he, she goes, he goes, it was okay. They just said, bring him another time. It's just to like talk about a plan for the future. And oh, I'm so glad. I'm so relieved. And um, I've got a, the information for a new court date. And I told them I didn't get the letter and blah, blah, blah. And he says, this day is fucked. Like this day is crazy. Yeah. And she goes, oh, I know. And he says, she goes, I guess we'll just, I guess we have to go home now. So next thing we see, we don't see anything. We don't see if they go home. Right. They don't go on the date. We don't see anything. So next thing we see, Chelsea is leaving a note at her dad's house. Like, dad, I came by. Please call me, whatever. Which is weird because they never followed up with anything having to really do with that. I know. I guess we're going to see the dad like next season, I guess. Right. Are they on this? Are they? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think they're on life. I don't either. Now that I'm Uh -uh. thinking about it. Um, Let's see. I'm going to write that down. Life after. And I want you to. Tell me by the end of this episode who's on live after lockup. Um, uh, yeah. All right. So, all right. So they get the new info for the court date. The day has been fucked. She leaves a note at her dad's house. Okay. So then we see Mikey is waiting for her at a restaurant and she's 30 minutes late and he's annoyed right. because he's sitting there and waiting. And I'm like, isn't he visiting her? Why aren't they just always together? Like, why is he? I thought that was weird, but maybe they split split up because she thought she was going to go over there and talk to her dad. And he's just like, okay, I'll meet you at the restaurant. Yeah. And maybe he's looking for a job. Like, we don't know. So they sit and um, she goes, he's like, oh, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. And she goes, I know I was at my dad's. And he goes, you always have your phone. You're always on your phone. Why didn't you answer? And she goes, I don't know. I wasn't looking at my phone, but I think my dad is like avoiding me because he doesn't want to meet you. And then they sit there for a second and he says to her, do you trust me? Mm-hmm. And she goes, yeah. And he goes, I have doubt in my mind. 
um, about trusting you because you won't tell me about this money and that makes me nervous and we should be able to talk about everything. And she goes, well, I'm not telling you anything. So he gets <laughs> up to, so he gets up to leave and she's like, people are looking at us, sit down. Like, what do you, what's the deal? And he goes, I, I just don't understand this. Like, this is crazy. We're supposed to be able to talk. And he says, I've left everything, including my daughter right. to come here. I think he's there for like two weeks to see you. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes, okay, all right, I'll tell you. So the money is from my mom. Like after she died, there was still money left over from the life insurance, probably after they paid for the funeral and everything. Right. And, um, and so that's where, that's where I got it from. And he goes, <sighs> why didn't you just tell me that? Like, yeah, I was worried it was from drugs or something illegal mm-hmm. or something that could send you away. And she goes, if I was doing something illegal, I would have a big, nice house and I would look like a crackhead. Do I look like a crackhead? Um, um, uh, <laughs> she does not look like a crackhead. So, okay. Um, she looks like she does something. So he <laughs> no, says, just kidding. So he says, why was it fo- so hard for you to tell me that? And she says, everybody in my life has done me wrong and stolen from me. And he says, but you and me are together now. There's no hiding anything. We shouldn't be hiding things from each other. So he gets out a napkin and mm-hmm. he makes a list of pros and cons for living mm-hmm. in Kentucky, where he's from, or Ohio, where she's from. I know Pro- you I know you snapped that, right? What it said. I, I know yeah. you did. The pros of Ohio, um, where she lives, are a job, <clears throat> which I guess he's got one lined up. Sex. Well, she because she says she could help him get a job. Yeah. yeah. Sex. He could get sex. Okay. <laughs> He hasn't gotten it yet. Um, But it's for the future, future sex. Okay, okay. And uh, kids, her kids are there. Okay. The cons of Ohio would be Mm -hmm. he would have to leave Hadley. Right. And his parole. So I guess his parole is in Kentucky. He would have to move it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't a long list on either side. No. mm -mm. And also- They were pretty simple. And also on the Hadley and parole, he had put, those were cons- but I think he meant those were pros to Kentucky. Anyway, it didn't make sense. I had to I had to think about it a little bit. It, it, it's Mikey he wrote it. So I know. I know. Yeah. So she was like, if you move here, I, you know, we will have to do everything we can to make sure you see your daughter a lot. So he's trying to explain, like, remember how hard it was for you for like those that week right. or two you were with me to be away from your kids. I and mean, that's how I felt for years. So now that I'm back with her, like it's gonna be really hard for me to leave her. So he gives her a new napkin that says, Ohio is home. So she says, I'm going to always remember this moment. Like it was so sweet. Like he's choosing me. And da, 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 da. That's and a, talk- a glimpse of her being nice. Cause we don't get many, we don't see Chelsea being nice quite she's often. Gonna, she's going to frame that and keep it in her hoarder house. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, in his talking dad, he goes, yeah, I've made this decision because, you know, it is true love and it doesn't come along very often. And we're mm-hmm. going to have to figure out how to make it work. And uh, we've worked really hard and gone against the odds. And she's like, in the end, it's all worth it, blah, blah, blah. Now, out by the car, she kisses him and she goes, when we get home, I'm going to feed the kids. And then I'm going to give you the best sex ever. And he's like, what, me? And he's, like, he's so cute. He literally skips to his car. He is so happy. <laughs> The man hasn't gotten any since he got out of prison that we know of. I mean, that we know of. He's right. just waiting. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what he's been doing back at home, but he hadn't gotten any from Chelsea. Not that we know of. Nope. All right. Now we go on to Andy and Brittany. And so we're we're back at that shop where she's buying the care package for Gracie. Mm-hmm. And Brittany is saying, yeah, his wife reached out to me and posted all her and Andy's back and forth messages. And then she posted them on my Facebook. And then she reached out to all my family. I was like, oh, his wife is messy now. I like it. Oh, she's gangster. I like that too. <laughs> like, tell it, if you're going to tell it, tell it all and tell it to everybody. Yes. And um, she goes, there will never be a time when I'll be able to unfold all the lies that Andy has told me. He's like an onion, just layered up with lies. <laughs> all right, girl. <laughs> okay, okay. Takes one she to just, one. It, it, it is still amazes me how she blames every... If someone who had a farted in that boutique, she would have blamed Andy for it. Everything is Andy's fault. I just don't... I hope she's looking back at this season and is able to recognize that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do too. Um, And back at the fishing pond, Andy tells the kids, yeah, you know, my latest ex got in touch with Brittany and uh, said that we were still talking and we weren't. 
And uh, <sighs> the producer asked Barry, well, what do you think about this whole thing? He goes, I got no idea what's going on with my dad and his ex. I don't know. <laughs> and then they talked to Allie and Allie goes, I don't know what's going on with her. I really liked her though. She was really sweet. And I think they were made for each other. And the producer says, are they together? And she goes, I don't know. I mean, not that I know of, but Allie's like, who the fuck knows? Everything he says is a lie. So who knows? It's yeah. true. It's true. I, can you imagine being Andy's kid and having to keep up with all his bullshit? These, these kids, these Gracie could take a page out of their book. Just, just mock your parent to their face. Don't believe yeah. a word they say. Yep. And then you'll live a better, happier life. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And she, she most definitely needs to learn that about her mom. Yeah. So Andy goes, I mean, isn't that crazy? That she would think I was hanging out with my ex. I mean, she's four hours away. How how on earth could I have seen her four hours away? But Brittany's just going to believe it if she wants to, no matter if it's true or not. Well, it, you have a, a hey, nice you, car and you and you don't mind driving. So no, you don't. No. What do you mean? How could you hang out with her? She's four hours away. What? Oh, Andy. So the, easily, like, just like he, he, just like he was able to leave his abandon his children for days or weeks at a time. We know that he's got it in him to leave and go somewhere else. He's crazy, a whole mess. It's not, it's not like how on earth could I have hung out with my wife? Like she lives in Bolivia. It's like she lives in <laughs> one county over. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, so the producer says to Andy, "So wait, you and your ex." are not divorced, but you were lying right. to Brittany the whole time. And Andy mm -hmm. says, well, I maintain I never lied to her. I mean, look, neither one of us have been a thousand percent forthcoming. I mean, who is, who is, I mean, there's aspects of your life. You don't always share with the other person. But what, being, being married it is what being married and having children are usually the top two. I mean, really, Andy? Yeah, he. I guess he didn't technically lie because he didn't tell her he was not married or that he was married. It's just language. So, yeah, Andy, the production is so shady. It says five months ago. And Andy <laughs> says, well, my last relationship ended in divorce, but it's no big deal. We parted <laughs> mutually. And then underneath it says five hours ago. <sighs> yes, I am still legally married. Uh huh. Yeah, but we haven't yeah. been together in a long time. It's so funny. I love when they shade them. Like I that. hate when they do that. The whole we're legally married. Then you're married. Period. You're point. married. You're you're married. Yeah. It could be like I've been separated for ten years, but exactly. I'm married. Yeah. You're still yeah. married. So then he's talking to the kids, and they're like, "What are you planning to do?" And he goes, "Well, I think I'm gonna move over to the Jacksonville, Florida area. I got I, I can be closer over there to the two you and Destiny." Barry is 17. His does mother he go is to in school? prison for drugs. Where does where does Barry live? He's 17. Hold on. Hold on. He said the Jacksonville, Florida area. Uh-huh. That's what he said. But they live in Georgia. Mm-hmm. But there's so many parts of Georgia that just touch Florida. Okay, you know? okay, okay, okay. I guess so it's like can, us with Texarkana. I, I mean, you think about the the Plaths, you know, they were always going over to Tallahassee from Georgia and it's only like 30 minutes away. Okay. Okay. So he goes, so I could be closer to closer to you guys. I don't know. Barry maybe lives with his sisters. I don't know. I, this child just probably wanders around and I mean, goes wherever Barry. he's needed. If he if you need someone to go pick up your girlfriend who's getting out of prison, you call Barry. You That's know right. what I mean? What else you need is a babysitter, doing? you call Barry. I, I, hopefully finishing school. Hopefully. Barry, we want better for you. We do. So then um, Jen, the the quote unquote sober friend. Sober asked friend. Br Ask Brittany says, um, so how do you have money to like pay for this care package? Mm. And she goes, well, I got a, I got a bit of money from my mom and I got a little bit from Andy, but you know, I really need to get a job. And uh, Jennifer says, I can help you. I can help you get a job. You know, I, I work at the gas station. It's not hard work. It's pretty easy. I can hook you up and you've worked at gas stations before. I mean, you could do it. And um, that is not the place for a former meth head to work at. Is that a gas station? Didn't sound like a good idea to me. Nah, and she doesn't, they don't need to work together. I period. Don't. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Running all sorts of game out of that gas Yes, station. they would be. Yep. So then Jennifer says, you know, Andy owes you money. If I was you, I'd be getting that money that he owes you. How this they is how you know, they Jennifer's no good. Well, Jennifer's no, no and good. They, they kill me with the O. Like she did a job for him and he forgot to pay her or something right. like that. Like, mm -hmm. no, he doesn't owe you shit. 
Oh, that money is owed. It was promised. Yeah. So, um, and her talking head, Brittany goes, I mean, listen, this, I'm just saying what he told me. Okay. What he told me was he had the Brittany fund and he said he was going to give it to me whether we were together or not. These are his words, whether we were together or not. And he still owes me $200. Well, you also promised to be a good and loving mother, but you were not. Here we are. Like, stop. She's the fucking worst. And it never it never got better throughout the, uh, the season. She never got better. Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. This just reminds me so much of that girl, um, Destiny and, um, and Sean. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. She was just like, give me my money. It was yeah. like, it's not yeah. your money. <laughs> yes. Yep, 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 yep. They're just a new version of those two. So... She decides, Brittany decides to text Andy. So we see him, you know, all fake, but he said, you know, sees right. it. They don't, they don't have cameras on these people at the same time, y'all. Okay. They only have one camera crew. So he sees it and it says, hey, can you send me a couple of hundred for a care package for Gracie? And he's like, <laughs> can you believe that? And Allie and Barry are like, you're not going to give her that money, are you? Because like we could use a couple of hundred bucks and we're your no children. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, ah. Can you believe that? I, she wants money from me. Let me, you know what I'm going to do? Let me show, I'm going to hit block. Y'all see this? I hit block. I'm going to do one better. I'm going to do one better. I'm going to delete it from my phone. Deleting from my phone altogether. It's a good thing I saved it in my notes. So I remember it. Delete, block, delete, block. So the talking Poor head, Andy. I know. She says, um, talking head, she says, Andy is a scammer. His life is a bunch of his life is a bunch of made up stories. And hey, I, I respect it. Good game, good game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm not looking game to recognized drug, game game recognized game. I'm not yeah. looking to live the drug <clears throat> life anymore. I'm looking for the life I should have had years ago. I've wasted a lot of time. I, I need to have the life I should have had. So she calls Gracie and says, "Like I'm gonna come visit you. I'm gonna bring you this care package." And Grace is like, mm-hmm, "I'll be waiting by the door. I'm sure you're gonna show up." <laughs> She's gonna sell that shit for another hit of meth. I mean, then we see Brittany is looking at her phone, mm-hmm. talking to him, and the production is talking to her, and they say, um, oh, what are you laughing at? She goes, <laughs> Andy just gave $200 to the Brittany fund, and it says, maybe you can fuck off now. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so cute when he tells me to fuck off and gives me money. It's adorable. Oh, she would think that was cute. Please. Oh, my God. Suck All right, it. let's move on to another Brittany. This is Brittany and baby. Key Rock. Yes. Now, this was a very sad scene, but also funny because of the bad rapping. Mm -hmm. And for those of you requesting that I do this rap, you are denied. Because I was so I was so upset uh, when someone did ask you that, and he goes, "I'm not doing it. It was too long." I was like, "Damn, I had my whole dance routine ready. (laughs) Like I practiced all weekend. I had all my hype." Uh Hype man words figured out and where mm-hmm. I was going to hype you up in between, you know, certain words of the rap. I, I, right. that was, I, was dis- I was disappointed. I was saddened. I really was. Well, yeah. Key Rock worked hard on it, and that's what matters. Um, Not hard enough. Well, all right. So um, what we find out is that Key Rock had a brother named Dejan, and he was in the streets, but then he became a man of God. And he had something wrong upstairs, basically. And Key Rock says he had schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. He walked from Richmond, Virginia to Arlington, Ohio. And at that point, he was hit by a train. That is 555 miles away. It is nine hours by car. Holy shit. He was walking for That's a crazy. Yeah. He did like a Forrest Gump run uh, yeah. run across America. Yeah. Damn. But it sounds like, like, it sounds like to me, like he just started walking like Forrest Gump and then I was running. Yeah. It sounds like he just started walking and they didn't yeah. know where he was for all this time. And then when he turned up in Arlington, Ohio, they must have ID'd the body. Yeah. And then they realized like, how did he get there? He walked. That's crazy. That's 555 miles. I looked that up. It was like eight hours and 50 minutes by car. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. I think yes. sometimes when you have a mental illness, yeah. you get obsessed on something. And I think that was the case for him. We have a guy that walks around here that's been walking around for years. years. We do too. Same guy. Yeah, he's Same definitely guy. done 555 miles for sure. <sighs> Currently, he's barefoot and I don't like that. I don't like that. And I see a lot of people posting about him being barefoot. Yeah. And 
Yeah. Well, our guy usually sometimes he's fully clothed, sometimes he's barefoot, sometimes he's got a haircut, sometimes he doesn't. He's been doing this since I was in high school. Yeah, same guy. He's walking just around, walks. Just, just walks. Yeah. Just walk. Yeah. And, and and my lazy ass, I think there should be valet every place that we go. And here these people are just walking. I'm like, oh man. You're just walking. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're wondering like if at night he knows where to walk back to to get to the homeless shelter or something. And during right. the day he just walks and then yeah. I but if you always see it on next door and stuff and people like somebody needs to get him some shoes and you know. Right. All right. So that's sad. Okay. So anyway, his brother TJ is there. He's one of the dumb and dumbers. So we, yes. have to, we have to assume now there were, so we had TJ, the other dumber that I can't remember his mm-hmm. name. And then we have Dejan. So that's three brothers. And then Key Rock was born female. Female. And now is mm-hmm. male. So I wonder if there's more brothers and sisters. I don't that's know. It. There's just the four. Um. So He's TJ standing there and he says, Dejan was to be so proud of you and your transition and how good you're right. doing. And um, Key Rock says, when my brother DJ got killed, um, Dejan, that's sorry. Right. I wrote TJ and then I wrote DJ. When Dejan got killed, he had Bible scriptures glued in his hat. Hmm. And I, I was so upset. I couldn't understand why God allowed this to happen. So when Dejan got killed, it was 2015. When Kirok first got locked up, it was 2016. It was right after. He said he was really angry at God and couldn't understand why God would allow like this to have something like this to happen. But he's come to terms with it. He's humbled himself before God. And he says, uh, because of that, he's uh, we like to do a performance, graveside performance for Dejan and holding his Bible. And he does it. He does a real yeah, I have a question. Bible rap. I have, yep. mm-hmm. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Is it wrong for me to say that he was so mad at God mm-hmm. that he decided to, on the Lord's child's birthday, go rob a family to prove oh, how Jesus's mad he birthday? was at God on Jesus's birthday? Could be. Yeah. He could be mm-hmm. like that. That Christianity means nothing to me. Christmas Day has no value to me. It's any other right. day. Yeah. Could be. Mm. Or he could have been subconsciously, he could have been doing it, or he could have been doing it because he needed money to buy his mama a Christmas present. I don't know. He should have done it on Christmas Eve then, not on Christmas Day. Right, because Christmas Day, people have already opened their shit and taken it up to their That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So TJ and Brittany, they both love this rap. They can't believe <sighs> it. They can't believe it. Brittany says they used to sit in their cell and cry about this day would come when he would be able to perform this rap for his brother <laughs> Dejan. TJ hugs Key Rock. They say, TJ is nice and says, I, I think our brother Dejan would be so happy about you being in our lives and so happy that you're here with us, Brittany. So Brittany says, let's do a prayer. So they stand around, they do a prayer. Everybody cries. And she <clears> says, <throat> yes, do you have something to say about <clears throat> a prayer? You can't about criticize somebody's prayer. I'm not. It's about the rap. I think the there was a lot, a lot of dead bodies rolled over in their graves after hearing that rap. <laughs> Okay. Because, uh, okay. you know, it had, it, had, it, it, it he was flowing and you could kind of tell what the beat was. Right. And then all of a sudden the beat just totally changed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I uh. felt I, that it would sound <laughs> even worse if it came from me. Because if I can't, if I can't keep a one, two beat, then I'm not going to be able no, to No, 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 no. He, he cannot keep that beat straight at all. But you know, no. what I think it's interesting. A long time ago, Jay-Z was on Oprah. Obviously, a mm-hmm. long time ago because Oprah hadn't been on for a long time. But Jay-Z was on there and was trying to teach Oprah how to rap. Remember when uh-huh. Oprah used to do that? Remember how Oprah no. also tried to get Beyonce to, to show her how to, like, twerk? She, um, be, yeah. I lo- Oprah wanted people to teach her a lot of things that she just didn't need to learn. No. And Mm-mm. Oprah didn't have any rhythm and neither do I, so I get it. Girl. No. So, no. Um, anyway, she tr- was asked Jay-Z, like, you know, when you're talented, you used to just hear the music. Like, how can you hear it this way? And he mm-hmm. explained that he they played a beat, right? And he said, so for the beat, you hear the the one, two, the one, two. But mm-hmm. I hear the the one and a half. I hear what's in the middle. So I rap okay. in the middle. I don't rap on the beat, which is kind of how Jay-Z does. He doesn't go right on the beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and he it was very, very interesting to me. So whenever I hear any of these people on these shows rap, right. I think, well, what would Jay-Z think? He would think you're doing it on, not even on the one and the two. <laughs> you're not even doing it on the half. It's just like so off. It's so off. Uh, I think Jay-Z would be like, you need to find a new passion. Right. You, this is not right. it. And I, I got to say, 
<clears throat> if you cannot support me the way that Britney supports uh, Key Rock's rap career, I don't yeah. support me at all. She no, just she thinks just don't. Best. She does. Yes, she does. Yes, she's been holding it down since prison. They were in that prison cell, and he was doing that rap. Mm-hmm. And she don't even need to improve it. It's perfect the way it is. Yes, it is. She loved. Mm-hmm. That's our baby. That's a that's a baby baby. So <laughs> anyway, they she does a prayer. They cry, and then she tells us, you know, I, I can't imagine the pain of losing a sibling like this. And I'm so mm-hmm. proud of him for doing this rap for his brother. And I support him in everything he does. And we are what we're doing is we are putting down the building blocks for a good marriage. Okay, because of rap. Because of his rap career. So he ne- here's okay. what I think. I think he needs to be just like, what's his name? That that little guy that you love that's going to be on this next season. Don't do what's that. Your, what's your little friend's don't, name? Don't do not don't do that, Mary Fang. You know damn well his name is Cam. And he not little, little. He just a, a, kind of little. But he's he's big in personality. Okay? Mm-hmm, he sure is. So Cam, and that makes him what, big. What Cam Cam did was he uh-huh. went and got himself a real job in a call center. And he's yes. rapping on the side. Yes. And he's a much better rapper than Key Rock would ever hope to be. And I think we can agree. <laughs> <laughs> we can agree that Cam actually could have a rap career. He, I, he would at least get booked from little, yeah. little small town performances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one is going to pay Key Rock to rap. But listen, what if we got Key Rock in a studio and he really had some like some real beats behind him maybe no he don't know how to stay on a beat well you let me tell you what mm-hmm. no montana mills we'll tell you that much oh god <laughs> here we go here we go I mean, <laughs> we still don't know, you know about that baby they had that baby like in july we still don't know what kind of baby it is we don't know that, anything that, about that, that baby that baby's five years old now. We have not a clue. You were talking about no. people keep it keep it to their keep it to their contract. These two, and showing a picture of that baby and nothing. And 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 Cam and Aries, they have shown their baby, but they they block out her face. Yeah, as if but we do recognize the baby. Yeah, that's what I always say. I'm like, do you think that someone's just going to recognize your fucking kid because you were on this reality TV show that not everyone in the world watches? We would recognize the baby. Yes. Immediately. Yeah. Because it probably looks just like one of them. Yeah. So she did a side picture and it looks like she looks like her mom. Oh, okay. Well, I can't Even wait to it was covered up and you can kind of see I'm like, she looks like Aries from that little bit of face that I can see. Okay, cute. Well, she's so pretty. Yeah. So um, what's their daughter's name? What's Aries' daughter's name? So she's so cute. Oh, Lena. 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 That's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Let's go on to Melissa, 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 and Louie. So mm. mom calls Louie. He's driving. She goes, hey, Louie, can you come pick me up at my favorite watering hole? I've had a beer <laughs> or two. Or 10. Uh, what was up at that bar? What, every light, and then they just brought some lights in from the street. It was the brightest bar you've ever seen in your whole life. What I, was it? it? Well, they, they knew that. They were going to be filmed. So they wanted to make it look like the best bar in town, even though we don't know the name of it. It had like one of those like sliding doors, like like a cafeteria, like you slide up and get your food. And then it had like some like um, a dart machine, like a dart where you'd like pay money to play darts. Well, we have some ice houses around here where they have that same kind of pull up door. Yeah. Yeah, so I, well, this was I inside, like it was a cafeteria, but it was closed. Oh. Like, like you can't get any uh, mozzarella sticks right now; it's closed. Oh. I, I really think it was like a bingo hall or something. It def- it wasn't like a real bar. Well, Donna most definitely is a regular there. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and she most definitely called him for a ride because she she didn't need to drive. No, 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 no. Good for her. Mm-mm. Good for her. Yeah. So Donna is talking to her friend Kennedy. Is like, yeah, you know, my son Louis, he's single now. And uh, Kennedy's super happy to hear this. And yes, she, she says, I love Donna. She's great. She was very close friends with my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine hanging out with your grandmother's friend after your grandmother already died and you're at a bar drinking with her? I mean, Donna's got to be 70 something. I mean, Louie's 41. She's got to be 70 something, don't you think? Uh, she's got to be 70. Well, we got to give her 70 at she's least. She's in her six. So I'm 44. My parents are 67. Okay. So she's 
she's got it. I don't think she looks 70. Well, she's in her hard, 60s, most hard definitely. Living. Hard living. So um, I'd be interested to know the backstory of like Louie's dad and what happened there. Yeah, where, 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 yeah. All that. Because yeah, I think Louie's her only kid. And move, you know, to where he got imprisoned. Things I'd like to know. All right. So can you imagine hanging out with your grandma's friend? You'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go hang out at this weird bingo hall with my grandma's best friend. I mean, if she had <laughs> weed, <laughs> maybe I'd go hang out with her, <laughs> have some edibles or something like that. Maybe just talk about all the good memories of my granny and like, that used to be our bitch right there. That was my girl. Otherwise, no. Uh, no, that would seem very probably. odd. Huh? You know, she's, she's always got a 12 pack of Miller Lite. Yeah. Always, always. Always. Oh my God. So anyway, Louie comes in to pick up his mom. And Kennedy's like, how's it going with your new girlfriend? I've heard she's kind of a bitch. And he's like, like, who says that? Like, really? It's like, bitch, your bra is showing. <laughs> like, I, cover that up. It, it was, that was all. Like, girl, you're hanging out drinking beers with the, your with grandma's mom. friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not attractive at all. So he says, no, I mean, I, you know, she's very independent. She's very outspoken. I'm in love with her. Yeah. And um, she goes, well, you've got plenty of options out here. And he goes, <laughs> I do have plenty of options. I'm choosing Melissa. Now, this is just like, isn't this interesting that like before when he was getting his teeth done, he was all into the girl with the um, hair. And yes. now he's all in love with Melissa. Yeah. Because the That's dentist why. shit was total bullshit. I, I would buy this storyline more so than the girl at the dentist's office's mm -hmm. storyline. Same. Because he so looked annoyed at this girl. Well, he's like, he's a sober person having to go pick up his drunk mom at the bingo hall. Oh, know? yeah, that's true. That's true. So he says, um, well, you know, I've gotten permission to go see Melissa in New Jersey. So I'm going to go there. I had even told her. I'm going to surprise her. She says I should like man up and do things on my own. Right. So I'm going to surprise her. Yep. And um, he says the majority of his life, he made bad decisions because he was under the influence. And now he's making the right decision. This is something he really wants to do. He really wants to be with her. And Kennedy goes, what is it for you in New Jersey? What's there for you? It's just like a woman. You think she should be more of a man? I think you deserve more than that. You deserve a a girl like me who drinks at the bingo hall with old ladies. Uh, yeah. yeah, with my bra showing because I have on a spaghetti strap with a regular <laughs> bra on. I wore, I wore a cardigan to cover it up, but it just keeps sliding down my shoulder. And <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy, you're no great catch. She probably works like, there. She probably does. Also, she's she like, this lighting does. is not great. Slightly yeah, right. and she had to close down the kitchen. That's why the thing was she couldn't <laughs> she couldn't drink a beer and record and cook the chicken fingers at the same time. <laughs> no, it's dangerous. She's got that fry grease is coming out. Yes. Of oh my gracious! So I got to tell you that you know Louis and Melissa are both doing a lot of self care these days, and I have a suggestion for them and for Donna as well. They should look into getting apostrophe because Louis got new teeth. He wants to look his best in all of his photos. You know that Donna is out there making him be in all the Christmas card pictures because she's like, yes. finally, I got my son in the Christmas card pictures, Louie, Louie. <laughs> so we can't control a lot around the holidays. We, we really can't. It gets, it gets wild. But if you have a future mother-in-law like Donna, uh, things are really off the rails. But you can control how you feel and look and get camera ready. For your holiday pictures and that's why we're excited to partner with apostrophe apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin and you might be dealing with breakouts or signs of aging that's me or acne scarring apostrophe is going to help you love the skin you're in so here's what it is it's an online platform that connects you with these experts it's an expert oh. uh, dermatologist you get customized treatment that's for your skin. So through apostrophe, you can get oral medications, topical medications that'll use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne or whatever your issue is. You fill out the online consultation and you know, I love an online consultation. <laughs> yes, you do. It makes me so happy. And it's not long. It's like 
very few questions, like less than 10. You fill out, you um, say what your skin goals are and what your medical history is. And then just right in the app, you snap some um, selfies, um, the app or the website, which are the one you're using. You snap a few selfies. It's like front side, left side, right side. And the dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan just for you. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne. You could have hormonal acne. You could have facial acne, back, back knee, as we call it, chest acne, or even butt acne. Ooh, Keisha. Whoa, whoa. Um, you're going to treat your breakouts from head to toe, whatever you got. So I went on the app. I did the online consultation. I snapped the photos. It wasn't cute, but I mm. did it. I made sure I had no makeup on or anything. I'm focusing on these dark spots on my face and my wrinkles. I got an email from the expert dermatology team right away. They gave me a tailored treatment plan. plan. I signed up. I didn't have to go to an office and wait and have people cough all over me. I didn't have to go stand at the pharmacy and get annoyed at all the Karens in the pharmacy line. I got my treatment box in the mail. It came with some cute stickers and a cute little postcard. And I think presentation is everything. So I loved it. So everybody listen up. I've got a special deal just for our audience. You get your first visit for only $5. You go to apostrophe dot com slash pink shade use the code pink shade savings of fifteen dollars because normally the consultation is twenty so this is for only five and the code is available to only the listeners here of pink shade get started you go to apostrophe dot com slash pink shade and click get started then use code pink shade at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only five dollars and I thank you to apostrophe for sponsoring this episode because we got lots of people on this show that could use apostrophe lots agreed Yes. Okay. So let's move on to someone with beautiful skin, but a delusional mind. Um, and that is Renika. Okay. She does have nice skin. She really does have beautiful skin. She does. She's, uh-huh. so, so, something's not clicking upstairs for her. Mm, yeah. A few things are not clicking upstairs. I don't know if and, there even is an upstairs. And by the way, we do know R.A.P. Asante is no longer with us. We know. Yes, we know. We know. So she's at her house, or I said she's at a house. We don't know if this is her house. She's at a home. (laughs) It's the place that she got after the Airbnb, but it's also not the apartment complex that she got evicted out of. Right, right. It's it's, just a lot of moving parts here with Renika. Yeah. So it's in Atlanta. Now, I really didn't think after this whole Asante thing, she's going to stay in Atlanta. It's like a real place to live. She's still there. She's still there. But I mean, if she is trying to be a rapper, that is a better place place. than Louisville. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So- She's getting ready for people to come over. And of course, they're trying to make us think it's Asante, but of course, we know it's not. So she says, since Asante and I broke up, girl, <laughs> y'all didn't break up. You found him in a hotel room with somebody else after hiring a PI. So come and on after he And after he snuck out of the house at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call that a breakup. I think I call yeah. that a full ghosting. Yes. So she says, since we broke up, I've been um, focusing on myself and mm-hmm. my career and, of course, my children, which she mm-hmm. should have been focusing on before. For, yeah. And so her cute daughters are there, and they're excited to see the family that's coming to visit. And Rika says, you know, everybody's going to get drunk and turn up. So <laughs> everybody comes in. They're like, hey, hey, hey. And everybody comes in. It's her mom, Sherry, her sister, mm-hmm. Shakola. They're pouring whiskey in her mouth. And there's some other white lady there that did not. A re- Who she? she? She's the token white lady. She's the neighbor. Who who was she? She came in with the Hulk. She, she looks like she hangs out with them. She they, they didn't know her. <laughs> like she's a minute of her production. She, <laughs> they like, wanted to be culturally, culturally diverse. Come on now. Yeah, but not not that lady. She looked like <laughs> she just came out of garden in her yard or something. Not that lady. <laughs> she has a little. Maybe. She might have a little hood in her. I don't know. She might. So, she looked comfortable. So <laughs> she, she did. She looked comfortable. So Shakola that we love, love Shakola. She had on her little um, little bucket hat that matched her shirt. She looks so cute. I cannot and, look at her name and not say in my head, not RC Cola, not Coca Cola, but Shakola. Every time I see her name, that that goes, it plays in my head. I just this is I don't an know. ad you just created yourself. Yeah, I just every I was like, not RC Cola, not Coca Cola, but Sha Cola. Sha Cola. Yeah. And there's that other sister, and they don't ever say her name on the screen. So I was like, with other sister, we don't get to shout her out because we didn't get her name. No. Um, and they're like, we never met him. We never met Asante. We don't know him. We don't need to pull a Mariah Carey. We don't know her. 
We don't know him. We never met him. We never saw him. So they're talking to um, they're talking to Renika, and they're like, "What's going on with Asante?" And she goes, "I'm still riding hard for him. That's my man." And they're okay. like, "They're like, did the Hennessy get to you? What is wrong with you?" Oh, and poor. You have to just actually say, "Bless her poor little heart." Poor thing. So um, Shakola goes like, gives her the, like the points to the eyes, points to the eyes, like yeah. you and me, you and me. Come uh-huh. on, let's go, let's let's go talk. So they go and talk. They're sitting in the bedroom, and she goes, "I mean, I love him." I love you know. him. He's my man. I love him. But I think I have to be done with him. But I still love him because we have a connection. Yeah, you and can't. She, you don't have a choice to be done with a person, especially when they're seeing other people. They dumped you. And, and here, we, here we are with yet another Renika top that is not fit appropriately. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. I, I think not such her a, boobs are so small, though, that they, yeah. they, they just don't. And that particular top, you got to have a little boobage. Something to stick in those little cups. Yes, yeah. and I don't think she has it. I think but that ain't stopping her. That, they, they're they're going to wear that to make it look like they got a little more boob, but it, it just I, slides up and down. It doesn't look good. She she, uh, she may use some of the Matt Sharp money to go get a boob job. Yeah, she's a tiny little thing. So she's very small. So she sits alone with Shakola in that bedroom, and they're talking. She said, "I love him, but I'm done with him." And Shakola's like, "Well, that's why I'm here, sis. I'm here to." to Check on you. I'm checking on you. Listen, you got you got big dreams of a tour. We got big diva. We don't have little. We got yeah. big diva. We got to do this yeah. tour. And I gotta say, you know, she's not a she's not bad. She not, she's not bad. She's a lot better than Key Rock. That's well, yeah, for that's damn right. sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And um, you know, talking head, Renika goes. I know I, people don't understand, but I love him. That's my man. I would marry him if I could, but other. Well, you can't because he's not want to marry you. And she says, other people don't understand it. And that's fine. Well, I, but other people can understand that you still love him. Right. We do not understand the rest of the shit on your list. Why you could, you love him and you would marry him. So yeah, then you can't even you. get him to stay the night at your house. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even say a full 24, not even 12 hours. No, no. No. Mm-hmm. So then we cut to Asante. He's one month out of prison. Uh, he has uh, gotten himself a grill. And he was clearly had been sucking on a red nylon later or something like that because his lips and tongue were red. Oh, I didn't even see that. That's he's all I can see. A, uh, he's going to a very fancy flower shop. He gets some lovely flowers. And he says he's been working. He's got a job. He's got his own house. I'm like, one month out of prison? You've already got a house? Well, really? we know what he was doing to get that house. He says he's just trying to move forward, and he's going to buy flowers for his girl. It's like an mm-hmm. anniversary. He goes to some girl's house. Her name is Quita, and he says they have been dating for a month, one month, and her hair is down below her butt cheeks. Yeah, yeah, it was, below it was long. the ass, below the ass line. She had some yeah, long I, I, hair. I don't really want anything long enough to tickle my butt crack. No, just, it's so long that's, to me. That's just too long a- unless you're like you're wearing a wig and you can take it off you know what i mean yeah yeah but for yeah, to sure. have it there all the time that would be annoying as hell yeah i thought so too so the production asked him whatever happened to uh your auntie is this auntie and he goes no 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 he goes me and auntie we're cool we're cool he goes yeah, it wasn't that deep it was never that deep uh, even though she thought she was his girlfriend for two years and like bust him <laughs> out of prison, it was making food for him and got him a phone. Yeah. He goes, no, no, no. It was never that deep. Me and auntie. No, we just friends. We just friends. So then after he goes into the room with Quita to mm-hmm. have some Netflix and chill. Yeah. He comes out. He's like, I got to make a call. Goes out to Quita's porch to call Renika. Now, of course, now- Quita's got to know because the, because the production crew is there. Well, he didn't just call her. He FaceTimed her. FaceTimed her. Mm, and Quita's mm, right in there making him some food. So he That's says, when you know you're a player player from the Himalaya. Uh, God. So he, he, she goes, hey, how you doing? And he's like, <laughs> hey. She's like, why are you calling me, Asante? <laughs> and he says, uh, I, I just want to see how you're doing. And she goes, Asante, you know you're never going to find anybody that's going to love you like I do. And uh, he goes, yeah, you never know. You never know. We might work out in the future. And uh, she goes, really? And he goes, you're just too argumentative. You just you just fight too much. And, uh, and she that's goes, well, just think- crazy. 
uh, and she goes, you just want to control me. I was like, well, you, she thought you were in a full relationship going to get married and you yeah. left after like 45 minutes to go to auntie's house. Yeah. He's lucky he didn't get knocked the fuck out while he's saying that she's argumentative. Like really? Argu- argumentative. And um, he goes, why don't you just go come on over and spend the night with me? <laughs> <And> just- <laughs> he just got done with Quita and he's got to get some dinner and now he's got to go home. And he's like, you just come spend the night with me. And she goes, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I want to, but I just think you're trying to reel me in. And he goes, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, trying to reel me in. He goes, again, I don't know what that means. And I that's don't know the what love. That means. And he also said that with narcissists, when she called him a narcissist. He didn't know what that means. And now she's like, Google it. Well, he can't yeah. Google it if he can't spell it. <laughs> like. <laughs> Do like my, my son does. My son, will, he'll be in the car we driving and he'll go something like, um, oh, God, transparency into his phone. And he'll go, so what it'll, are you doing? So yeah. it types it out for him. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't know. Yeah. I'm like, you don't know how to spell transparency. You can have a hard time getting in college. So, <laughs> so anyway, he says he doesn't know what real me in means. And she says, um, I wish that. You could show me that you really changed, not just words, because I don't believe right. anything that you say. You're going to have to show me that you really changed. Yeah. And he, he's not trying to show anybody anything. He didn't care. The, the, didn't there's care. nothing to show. He, he gives zero fucks about these women. Like, he is no. a womanizer. He didn't care. He didn't have to try to show her. He didn't care. So Mm-mm. it's not like he's like, yeah, you're right. I should try to show you to show you that I care. He didn't care. He didn't care. So she was like, I can't believe anything he says. And he's like, okay, I don't care. Well, that's smart. So she tells him, I think you'll just move on and I'll just move on. Okay. Now you just be good. And so they hang up and the producer says to him, are you playing Renika? He goes, nah. I mean, she knows me. She knows what I got going on. So, you know, I'm antsy from being in prison. I heard about this girl, Keisha, who said that I should just try all the women out. So I'm on the Keisha plan. I got bored. I love her. I love her. She was there for me in a hard time. We now this was sad, Keisha, because he goes, "Yeah, we got history. You only live once. I'm gonna I know. enjoy my life. I'm gonna enjoy my life while I'm here, and that's how it is." Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that one got me a little. That was sad. It did. It did. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it, I felt a little sad for Asante in his womanizing ways because that just he had no clue. And and I'm trying to think, you know, how much longer after the season wrapped up they wrapped up filming did he pass away mm-hmm. i don't know but we don't, don't know, know when so they stopped filming somebody on the reddit knows i'm sure um, all right now we're going to finish off with uh joy nomi and red a love story for the ages Ugh, so jesus this, mar- this married couple with their <laughs> biological child <laughs> so he is sitting at his mom's house, obsessively calling Joy. Now, where we last left, she was five <clears throat> hours away in a hotel room and was like, he is the love of my life. And I spent seven years on him. So And so my like, grandmother's quilt or whatever that sold. was. That she was <laughs> fucking sold and all our family heirlooms. I sold them to go pick him, to pick up him and his woman hips because he's got woman hips. He just got that baby face. He does look like face on face. He does look like somebody put his face on another face. And he just, he has, he has a, a womanly shape about his bottom half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so do, just, yeah, Andy has, has a little bit too. Mm-hmm. So, Andy got a whole bunch of other so, stuff going on too. <laughs> he's got a lot of stuff happening. That's right. So he's obsessively calling Joy and he says, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm just going to keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. I'm just going to keep calling because my mom won't let me back in the house. Right. So, um, I love her. I love her. I want to make it work. I love her. And then we see the doorbell ring and thank the Lord. Joy has driven back five hours like a real dumbass and gone yeah. back. Like we said on our last episode, he, she should have said, get yourself on a plane because I'm not coming back. Y- yeah. And the thing about it is... <clears throat> You think about her lack of money. So now yeah. you're using up more gas money. You're going to have to stay in another hotel. Right. Because you went back and picked up this dumb motherfucker. Right. And he didn't have any money. None. Mm-mm. So they hug and they kiss. And he's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want her to have a tissue. One of these times that she's crying, I want her and Brittany just to have a da- goddamn tissue. She is always just shoving her fingers up under her yes, glasses. Yes, she like, is. And just yeah. wiping those little cheeks. <laughs> yeah. So she goes, 
Do you have your stuff? Okay, let's get ready to go. Okay, Red, so as long as you put in the effort and I put in the effort and we both put in the effort, we mm. both want this, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Please so tell me like, I'm right. Yeah. So he goes, I love you. I'm so glad you came back. You an angel. You an angel sent to me right from God. You're so beautiful, right? Whoa. So, if they get in the car, don't bring God into this, Red. Yeah, he down. sure, and he and he he did. I don't think the Lord really liked that. I don't think he likes that. Where he did was the that. Lord when you were with Julie, throwing your phone on the other bed and while you were while you were sleeping with a demon? Because something wrong with that girl. And <laughs> the <laughs> and the word on the street is that she's pregnant. <gasps> really? Yeah. And word on the street is that Joy says that she's three months, and the last time she was with Red was two months ago. But she also has a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll see. see plot thickens Mm -hmm. so they're in the car and they're driving starting on their drive again right she says just be truthful babe like for real don't play me babe and he says it's fine i'm not gonna do anything anymore look you can look at my phone you can look at my phone anytime you want now let's go let's go let's start driving before my mom realizes i'm leaving that i'm leaving (laughs) the car yeah So in her talking head, she goes, like, I know people think it's crazy that I'm getting back together with Red, but, you know, my son needs a father. And this is the best I can do as a prisoner from another state. So there we go. I I think a little sway would say, I'll just stay fatherless. If this is all, if this is the best you can do, we're good. You've done this for 40 years. Yeah, we were doing good. Cold hot dog wieners and all. We were doing good. Got all the sisters there that love sway. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. They don't need, we don't need red. So she says, um, in the talking head, he goes, yeah, things are just going to keep getting better and better. I'm excited for this new chapter and I'm excited for all that sex we're going to have because, you know, uh, me and Joy, we talk about all the stuff, the crazy sex we're going to have. We're going to have sex in a limo and in a grocery store. Keisha, I can't, I couldn't write this if I wanted to. The words that come out of these people's mouths. We are going to have sex in a limo and a grocery store. And he he really means that, too. Like, that is really a goal of theirs. I believe it. A grocery store? Aisle what? five. Aisle five. <laughs> <laughs> clean, clean up on aisle five. <laughs> <laughs> oh just my God. disgusting. Oh, Jeez. He just says he is so happy to go home and see his son and live in his house, his sanctuary. <sighs> oh, oh, so then they just happen to find one of those break rooms on the way out of town. Of course, just like Mikey and Chelsea just happened upon that music store. Isn't that crazy well, yeah. how uh-huh. that happens? Uh-huh. Wow. So they go to this rage room and it's real intense and real stupid. And she's like, this is for the times you betrayed me. Smash. Mm -hmm. This is for the times that I fucked three guys and said the baby was (laughs) yours. Smash. And she's just pawing at her face. Yes, she is. Well, I think she needed to throw down one more bottle. Then that's from when she finds out Red fucked Julie. (laughs) (laughs) Red's like, let it out, babe. Let it out. Let it out. (laughs) So the production talks to him. It's like, now that you guys are like back on a good track and you started your 400 hour drive to wherever you're going, um, you're going to tell her about Julie, right? Because you're going to be honest. You got to be honest. You got to be truthful. And he goes, yeah, no, I'm not going to be telling her about Julie. I don't think that's uh, no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. And the production goes, well, basically production's like, y- you know, you're going to have to because it's on the TV, right? You're going to have to. Yeah. I mean, but he was smart in his logic of not telling her while they're still driving to New Mexico because she could just drop his ass off in the middle of nowhere. And it's not like he's got any money to get back home. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I think Mm -mm. you need to ride that lie out until you at least get to New Mexico. So he says, no, I'm not going to tell her about Julie because because if I did, she'd be gone and then she wouldn't come back. She wouldn't come back. She'd come back. She'd come back. Let's be honest. All right, now that's the end, and then we get this end cards for the season like they always do. They make this real yes. sad music, and then they show what's going on. So Mikey finally got lucky. Yay. And, he, and then we see he and Chelsea on horses, and it says yes. he and Chelsea have been living together for four months. So that's good. Nice. That is good. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now we see Red is focused on being a one-woman man. He mm. and Joy Nomi are excited to expand their family. It's not their 
They're not you mean start a family. It's it's start. They 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 get their name they get their numbering wrong just like Matt Sharp does with these episodes. It's like <laughs> marriage. Okay. Baby, that's biologically yours. Like it's all just it's just it's just mixed up. But then again, can you imagine you go to the doctor and the medical assistant is Joinomi? Yeah, I bet she's just like, okay, we're going to take your weight. I'm going to get your blood pressure. Okay, the nurse will be in next. That's all she does. And that's it. Yeah, that's all she's good for. She she puts the clipboard and the thing outside the door. Yeah, that's all she's got. Patient's ready to see the nurse. Yeah, she Um, she doesn't know how to do blood pressure or anything like that. No, no, no. I think they let her do blood pressure and temperature Mm. and then put the little thing on the tip of your finger for your (laughs) pulse ox. She does those three things, writes them down, and then puts the clipboard in the thing and goes, the nurse will be in in just a minute. Yeah. Joy Nomi being a medical assistant reminds me of this one time I went to the doctor and the medical assistant told me that everyone's born with a certain amount of heartbeats. (laughs) Mary Payne, you're laughing, but it took me six whole days of high anxiety to figure out that's so fucking stupid that people wouldn't run like yeah it took me six days to I, my anxiety was high i'm like i need to preserve all my heartbeats and then i was just like that's the stupidest shit that i've ever heard in my life wow. and i believed that shit for six whole days and i told well, james he's like keisha <laughs> <laughs> my anxiety was on high that whole six days was it yeah. joy that sounds like something she would say. Exactly. <laughs> Don't worry, because you've got lots of hard beats left. I'm looking at your chart. Bye. Okay. All right. So we see Sheree still communicates with Anthony, but she's mm-hmm. focusing on herself. And Anthony is continuing his anger management classes. All right. Because that mama was staying on his ass, going to stay on his ass about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Key Rock plans to move forward with the chest surgery. Mm-hmm. And Brittany hopes he will propose in the next few months. And my question was, aren't they already engaged? But you told me on the other episode that they that was just a promise ring. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Melissa and Louie are still on a long distance pause. <sighs> he still lives with Donna, but he does have plans to relocate to New Jersey. Now, when they show Donna, you know, zhuzhing around her house there, mm-hmm. I did notice a huge box in the background. It looked like a packing box. Packing box. So okay. I was like, she, she, if he's going, she's going too. I mean, I would too. You're <clears throat> you're my only kid. You've been in prison 99 years. Yeah. I'm going. Re- plus they, they know people back in Jersey. I mean, they have That's a whole life from. there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's moving. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with you. I'd move too. Um, Brittany, uh, Brittany and Andy has been sober for two months. Okay. Uh, Andy, Andy is officially divorced and okay. he's hoping to rekindle with Brittany. As and we, we know. know that they do. And we know that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, Asante had a fatal car accident on September 2nd of 2023. Mm-hmm. Renika and Asante saw each other only as friends before he passed. And he is survived by his three sons. That's sad. That's very, very, very sad. Now, they have they don't need no life with their dad because he's been in prison. Mm-hmm. And then he passed away. I know, because when he died, he was 32 years old. Mm-hmm. It's very, very sad. Now, do you have the list of who is going to be on Life After Lockup? So there's going to be Montana and Justine. Yeah. Cam and Aries. Mm-hmm. Chevelle and Quaylen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mouth hole. Jo- Sean. Uh, Sean and his wife, who I can't stand. Sarah. Jo- yeah. Sarah, Joinomi and Red. And uh-huh. then Louie and Melissa. I think that's it. Chance, Chance and Taylor. And Chance and fucking Taylor. Who just, got, <laughs> who just started an only lines, uh, uh, only fans thing. Like last who week. Did t- Taylor did? Uh-huh. Oh, girl. Yeah. She needs to start only really fans where she, where she gets that um, chest tattoo fixed. Something. I can't. Ew, I don't. Well, I don't. All right. Well. Yeah. Remember you do what you got to do. The, the, remember when she got the infection in her hoo-ha because she, he put it in the butt and then put it in the hoo-ha? And everyone knows you're not supposed to do that. I guess. No. Maybe I, there's some I, people we, who don't know that. Well, obviously she didn't know. She's like, I'm never oh, letting you God. do that again, Chance. <laughs> yeah, as you, uh, poor thing. Like, everyone knows that. Can't do that. I, I hope Bobby's okay. I hope we get to see Bobby doing okay. Her sister. I think I read something about Bobby. 
What was but it? But I can't remember it what it was. Please don't say it was I, bad. I, I, wa- I want to say someone said she was back using, but don't quote me on oh, that. Oh, no. All right, Don't Bobby. quote me on that one. All right. We won't, Bobby. I don't want to see Bobby and Taylor show up in OnlyFans doing twin stuff. I don't want to see that. Oop. I think that, wait, I think that only works well when you're identical twins. I think they are identical twins. They just look really different. No, they're not identical twins. They're fraternal. I don't know. I think they look a lot alike. I don't think they look alike at all. Oh, I do. I just think because they've always had different sort of body shapes and different hair. And then Bobby, of course, has got those face tattoos. Yeah. We're going to have to take, hopefully she's on this season and we can get a better look. Yeah, because she's got that big T that also looks like a J on the side of her neck, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I told you my mom tried to do to us when we were little for monograms. <laughs> because my mom would get stuff monogrammed. And it would, yes. so my initials were MPC and my sisters were MTC. Uh-huh. So my mom would get them to do a T and just do a little bit of a loop around. So it could be a P. Oh, how So we could both funny. wear it. Mm-hmm. That's funny. It's not, it's not a bad idea. It's not. Now that now that I have kids of my own at the time, I'm You see. Yeah. 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 It's smart. I'm not going to wear her clothes. It looks like a T. And then my sister's like, I'm not wearing it. It looks like a P. And your mom's all like, look at it from this angle. And there's <laughs> look how the much tea. money I saved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you guys could see my notes from these last two episodes, I've got life after question mark, face transplant question mark. Um <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go look up that face transplant. You have you to. Said, like rock stock. It is. Yeah. It does. It does. Oh my gosh! I've well, always seen people look like people, like you know, Chelsea's dad and the silver. Yeah, silver, you were right yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. look a lot. Yeah, yeah. Some something always looks like something else. Um, what's going on on the Libra Lounge with Keisha? Uh, we just put out a new show last week, so we'll be recording, be recording this week. And if you follow the Libra Lounge, boy, do I have a bam update for you guys. And this one's it's kind of close to home. So, yeah, we'll be talking about that. Bam Magara. I, I didn't know if you meant like bam or if you Mm-mm. meant like bam the person. Bam the person. Yeah. Bam the person. Okay. Yeah. Uh-oh. We, uh, I know you're yeah. a little obsessed with that story. And I just don't know why because I wasn't even obsessed with him when the show came on. Yeah, but right. I always like to cheer for a crackhead, and sometimes I get oh. a favorite crackhead, and currently he's my favorite crackhead. Okay, was he on Jackass? Is that what he was on? Yeah, yeah. Jackass. Okay, I never watched that. And Viva La Bam. Yeah. Okay. You didn't watch Jackass? No, I can't watch. I, I I don't I don't like pranks, and I don't like to watch people hurt themselves. I really don't. It was good back in the day. I don't know if I could sit and watch it as a 44-year-old woman now, but back in the day, it was pretty god darn, gosh darn funny, especially when this one guy pretended he only had one leg and he tried to skateboard. No, he tried to rollerblade. Hysterical. What? <laughs> oh, Keisha. Oh, that is too bad. We got to so end. Oh, funny. Gotta bye. End. Bye. Bye, guys. We got to end on that. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram yes. at the Libra Lounge with Keisha at Pink Shade Pod. And like Keisha said in the other episode, give us five stars and, yeah. and say something nice. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have anything nice to say, go say it to somebody else. Don't say it to us. We don't want to hear it. Like your mama. Like your mama. Go, okay, go bye. Say it to your mama. And bye. Not read by me, Mary Kane. Don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com.